My name is Rick Renner. Today I'm in the conference room of the Moscow Good News Church, right in the heart of Moscow, Russia. Thousands of people come to church in this building, and I founded this church. And today these people are listening to me on television as I talk to them about the importance of the Word of God and knowing God's explicit will for their lives. Did you know that God has a plan for you? You're not an accident. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 to every Everything that is under the heaven, there is a purpose. So if you're under the heaven, that verse means you have a purpose. You're not an accident. You were not a last minute thought. God really had a plan for you. And in fact, Ephesians chapter 1 says God had a plan for you before the foundation of the world. God's been waiting a long time for you to show up so he can reveal his power and his glory through you. You might say, well, what is the plan and what are the signs to let me know I'm on track. Well, in today's program, I'm going to talk to you about concrete signs that are just as real as any stoplight you see on the street. When you see these signs, you'll know that you're lining up with God's plan for your life and you'll feel the green light to proceed. What are those signs? That is what I'm going to talk to you about today. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey friend, this is Rick Renner, and I want to thank you for letting me come right into your space today. Today, we're going to talk about how to know the will of God, and I'm going to give you six signals to know God's will for your life, six signals. So get a piece of paper and get something to write with because today you're going to want to take notes. But I'm offering you my series, which is called Knowing the Will of God. It's five parts. It comes in multiple formats and it comes with a study guide. The two of these together are just powerful. You need this to share with a friend or to study yourself. If you're trying to know the will of God for your life, you need to hear and hear and hear this series. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Put this into your ears. It will renew your mind and it will help you perceive the will of God for your life. We're also offering you my book right now. In fact, this is the last day we're offering it. It's called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. God has an explicit plan for you. And when you get in it, you'll begin to experience great success in your life. How do you identify the will of God? How do you go from where you are to where God wants you to be? All of that is in this book. Order your copy today. And if you're not a partner, but you've been considering becoming a partner, please do that today. Just go online. You can become a partner or call us and immediately we'll send you a package of books as our way of saying thank you for coming into our partner family together. We are affecting the lives of people who really need the teaching of the Bible. But today we're going to see six signals to tell you what is or what isn't the will of God for your life. I have my Bible. I hope you have your Bible. But today we're going to be going all over the Bible. And we're going to begin in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, where the Apostle Paul gives us a very important principle. And he says, Every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So according to Paul, when God is saying something, he confirms it in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And this principle also applies to knowing the will of God. If God is revealing his plan to you, he will confirm it in the mouth of two or three witnesses. He may confirm it in the mouth of your pastor. He may confirm it through a circumstance. It may be that you're reading the Bible and suddenly there's a verse that speaks to your heart. But when God is telling you to do something, he will confirm it in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And when he does that, it gives you a very firm foundation to stand on. If you see a lot of witnesses confirming it, it's like a green light. If you see several conflicting signs, it needs to be a yellow light. You need to slow down. And if you see several signals that say, no, don't do this, you need to take it as a red light and proceed no further. But I'm going to give you six signals. If all of these line up, you have a green light. If a few of these say no, then you need to move with caution. If a lot of them say no, then you need to take as a red light and you need to stop. 
but there are six signals. I use these in my own life. You can use these in your life. Signal number one. Are you ready? The voice of the Bible. God will never ask you to do something contrary to his word. Now listen careful. The God who is leading you is the same God who inspired the Bible, and he's not ever going to lead you to do things contradictory to what he has already stated in the Bible. I'm going to read that again. The God who is leading you is the same God who inspired the Bible, and he is not ever going to lead you to do things contradictory to what he has clearly stated in the Bible. Nothing can be the will of God that is contradictory to what is taught in the Bible. It just will never be the will of God. For example, adultery is never the will of God. God is not leading you to a new relationship if it is adultery. That is contrary to the teaching of Scripture. Stealing is never the will of God. You don't even have to pray about that. It is contradictory to the teaching of Scripture. Lying is never the will of God. Being disrespectful to authority, it is never the will of God. You cannot excuse those behaviors or even convince yourself that maybe somehow, in some way, in this case, God is making an exception because it would be contradictory to what God has already said in the Bible. And the God who inspired the Bible is never going to lead you to do something that is contradictory to the teachings of the Bible. The Bible is very clear on God's revealed will. This is the reason why it is so important that you read the Bible, that you read God's Word. And if you don't have a daily Bible reading guide, contact us right now and we'll help you get one. But in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, the Bible says, And this is the confidence we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, that's the Bible, He hears us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. When we stick with the Bible, we are on safe ground. The Bible tells us the will of God. For example, healing is the will of God. That is in the Bible. Walking in integrity. That is always the will of God. That's what the Bible says. Tithing. That is the will of God. That is what the Bible says. Not committing adultery. It's the will of God for you to walk in marital integrity. That's what the Bible says. Not lying is always the will of God. That's what the Bible says. You see, there are some issues which are so clearly stated, you don't even have to pray about them because the Bible clearly addresses them. And the God who is leading you, listen careful, the God who is leading you is the same God who inspired the Bible, and he's not going to lead you to do things con contradictory to what he has clearly stated in the Bible. Nothing can be the will of God that is contradictory to what is taught in the Bible. So number one, the first signal is the voice of the Bible. Number two, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Over the years, I've personally learned that if I will listen, the Holy Spirit will lead me. And in fact, we are promised in Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, which means if we're children of God, we have a right to be led by the Holy Spirit. That word led is the Greek word ago, and listen to what it means. It means to lead, but it often depicted animals led by a rope tied around their necks who followed wherever their owner led them. Thus, it meant to be led. The owner would tug and would pull and the animal would follow. This is a picture of the Holy Spirit leading us. He'll tug on our hearts. He'll pull on our hearts. And if we are children of God, Romans 8 verse 14 says, we need to expect the Holy Spirit to lead us. So number one, we have the voice of the Bible. Number two, we have the voice of the Holy Spirit, which involves the leading of the Holy Spirit. Number three, the voice of your own heart. Listen to your heart because God gives you desires. God will give you the desires of your heart because God put the desires in your heart. Now, he didn't give you desires that are contrary to the teaching of the Bible, but God did give you desires. For example, maybe you have a desire to sing or you have a desire to be creative. There's something in you, a desire to do business. It just burns inside your heart and you're praying all the time, God, please show me your will. Show me your will. Show me your will. When God's will is exploding inside you, you need to listen 
because God puts desires in our heart. Psalm 34 verse 7 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 20 verse 4 says, May God grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. Often the will of God is revealed simply by the desires in our heart. You know, when I was a child, I had dreams and I had desires. I thought they were carnal. I thought they were silly. But guess what? Now at this moment in my life, those dreams, those desires, it's exactly what I'm doing. Those were dreams and desires that God put in me. Don't try to be so deep that you miss what is very evident. It might be that what your heart beats for really is the will of God. So pay attention to the voice of your own heart. Number four, the voice of spiritual leaders. Older leaders who know us very well can help us discern the will of God for our life. They'll help us discern what we should do and what we shouldn't do. I remember when Denise and I were first married, I wanted to purchase an old house, a house that actually had been burned down. But it was an old Civil War home in the city where we lived, and I wanted to renew that house. I've always had a desire to redo houses or to redo property. So I began working on that house, and an older seasoned leader came to me and said, Rick, what in the world are you doing? Well, at first it offended me because I thought he just didn't have vision. He didn't understand my desire. But he said, Rick, let's really walk through this. Would God really lead you to do something like this when you don't have the money for this project? You don't have any available resources to turn to. You're going to start this project. You cannot finish this project. You're going to end up with a real problem. And I understood at that early age in my life, I was just excited about a project, but it was nonsensical. This was not something I should do. And that older man spoke such wisdom to me. But I had to be willing to listen I had to be willing to submit. Or I'll give you another example. Another voice that spoke to my life that made a great difference in my life, and that was Pastor Bob Yanyan, who was my pastor at the time. And Pastor Bob heard me teach a series. And he came to me and he said, Rick, this series is so significant, I think you ought to put it into a book. Well, I hadn't tried to write a book in years because I had earlier on tried to write a book and somebody kind of made fun of it and that discouraged me. So I put it away and never picked up the pen again. But Bob Yanyan came and said, I believe God wants you to put this message into a book. Well, I respected him so much that I took his counsel very serious. And I began to write my first book. I today write books because Bob Yandian spoke to me and told me I needed to begin writing. God used an older seasoned leader to speak into my life. We need to listen to the voice of the Bible. We need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We need to listen to the voice of our own heart. And we need to listen to the voice of older, mature spiritual leaders who speak to us. That may be me. That may be your parent. That may be your pastor. It may be the person that is discipling you or just somebody older than you in the Lord. But keep your ears open and have an open heart so they can speak to you. God may speak to you through them. God will confirm his will through two or three witnesses. He'll speak through the voice of the Bible. He'll speak through the voice of the Holy Spirit. He'll speak through the voice of your own heart. He will speak to the voice of seasoned, mature, spiritual leaders. And number five, God will speak through the voice of circumstances. Now, this really is the lowest level leading. You can't be led by circumstances, but neither can you ignore circumstances. You have to pay attention to circumstances because often when things line up, it is a green light that you are supposed to do something. And when doors close, very often that is a signal that you're going in a wrong direction. I remember early in my life, there was something I wanted to do and every door just slammed shut. I was so discouraged by that. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Rick, very often a door will close before the right door will open. Never be discouraged by a door that closes. So if a door closes, the circumstances seem to say, don't do this. Maybe the door is open. Maybe everything lines up and the circumstances say, you've got a green light to proceed. Pay attention to circumstances, but don't only be led by circumstances. This is a very low level kind of leading. You've got to put it all together. You've got to, first of all, hear the voice of the Bible on the subject, and the Bible will address most subjects. 
Number two, you've got to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit tugging on your heart to do this thing? Number three, you've got to listen to the voice of your own heart. Is this thing agreeing with what's in your own heart and your own soul? Does your heart beat for this? Number four, you've got to listen to the voice of spiritual, seasoned, mature leaders. Listen to them because they will help you, but also listen to the voice of circumstances. Is it lining up? Are the doors closing? Pay attention to that. Sometimes when it seems doors have closed, it is devilish resistance and you have to resist it. Sometimes it's God closing doors. That's why you need to listen to older, seasoned leaders. They will help you discern what's taking place. But finally, we come to voice number six. You say, what is voice number six? What is signal number six? The voice of faith. This is very important. The Bible tells us in Romans 14, verse 23, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And I have learned through the years that when God is leading me to do something, it usually will require me to increase my faith. God doesn't usually require me to do things that don't take faith. Usually, if it's really a leading of the Lord, it means I'm going to have to believe, I'm going to have to stretch, I'm going to have to grow. And that's because God is not just interested in using us. God wants to change us as he uses us. He wants us to go from strength to strength. He wants us to go from glory to glory. And when God asks you to do something, normally it will require faith. So I say, listen for the voice of faith. I think about Moses, when he led the children of Israel into the promised land, they had to go through the Red Sea. It required faith. When God told Joshua to lead the children of Israel across the Jordan into the land of promise, they had to cross the Jordan at flood stage. It required faith. For Jesus to come into the world to redeem you and to redeem me, as we saw In Hebrews 10, verse 7, Jesus said, I come, it is written in the volume of your book, to do thy will, O God. It required faith for Jesus to come into the world, to die on the cross, believing that he would have a resurrection. Faith was required for all of it. And furthermore, we're told in Hebrews 11, verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Wow, that is important. So in summary, If all six of these signals line up, you have a green light. What signals? Number one, if the voice of the Bible is in favor of it. Number two, if the voice of the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart and leading you in a certain direction, pay attention to that. Pay attention to that. And by the way, often the leading of the Holy Spirit is just a tug. It's just a pull on the heart. You have to really pay attention or you'll miss it. Number three, the voice of your own heart. Don't ignore your own heart. God may have put certain desires in your heart, and that is the will of God for your life. Listen to your heart. God will give you the desires of your heart if those are desires that he placed there. Next, the voice of older, seasoned, mature, spiritual leaders. Thank God for the voice of leaders that speak into our life. I am still listening to the voice of those that are seasoned, those that are older than me, their counsel is very, very valuable. Number five, the voice of circumstances. I think about my own life. Whenever a great door opened for a particular TV channel we'd been waiting for and waiting for and waiting for, suddenly it all opened. I didn't have the cash to pay for the TV time, but the circumstances lined up. I had to discern whether or not this was the will of God. But when I saw these doors just open one after another after another, I knew only God could open these doors. A great open door was literally set in front of me. And the circumstances said to me, this was a green light. Even though I didn't have the money, I had this green light. And I knew that God was beckoning me through that door. So pay attention to circumstances. And finally, number six, the voice of faith. Does this require faith? When God tells you to do something, he'll usually tell you to cross the Red Sea or to cross the Jordan or to do something that normally you could never do by yourself. And when all of these line up, just like the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. If all of these line up, it is likely that you have 
a green light. If several of them say no, then you need to proceed with caution. If many of them say no, then you need to take it as a red light and just wait. By the way, it never hurts to wait just to make sure you're doing what is right. But if you've got a green light, charge, go forward. God is beckoning you through the door into his will, into his plan. And when you step through that door, wow, you're going to leave a black and light world and you're going to step into a world of full color. The adventure will begin. There's just nothing like doing the will of God. But in this series, we've seen, number one, what God requires for you to know his will. You have to lay aside your will and open your ears to hear his will. Number two, you have to make the absolute decision to present yourself as a living sacrifice, and you have to do it every single day. You have to choose the Bible to be the number one voice in your life and allow the Bible to renew your mind and to fine-tune your mind so that you can hear God speak to you on every level, even about the simplest things. And last of all, we've seen that there are six signals that if they all line up, it's likely that you have a green light to proceed. Now, if you need somebody to pray with you right now so that you can discern whether you've got a green light, a yellow light, or a red light, call us. It would be our privilege to pray with you right now in this very moment. Ring us or send us an email and we'll put our faith together with you and we'll believe for your mind to clearly see for your ears to really hear what God is telling you to do or not to do. It's just as important for you to know what you're not supposed to do. But one thing is sure, the God who inspired the Bible will never lead you to do anything contradictory to the scriptures. This has been good today. I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. Can you really know the will of God for your life? God has a plan explicitly formed just for you. But what does God require before he opens your mind to comprehend it? What steps do you need to take to get into a place where you can actually see God's will and begin to implement it? If you're saying, I want to know this will of God for my life, then knowing the will of God is what you need to put you on the right path. In this five-part series, you'll learn how to find God's will, how to know if you're on or off track, whether there is a permissible will of God as opposed to the perfect will of God. Available in digital or physical formats starting at just $10, you'll learn how to know God's will for your life and how to get started doing it. In addition to this teaching series, you can also purchase the book, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. In this book, Rick will show you step-by-step step how to find God's will and get started on the path to fulfill it. It's really not so hard. And as you read this powerful book, Rick will help you know how to begin living a life filled with adventure. The Will of God, The Key to Your Success can be yours for only $17. Don't miss this special offer, Knowing the Will of God and the Will of God, the Key to Your Success. Call now or go to renner.org. Call or go online now. И мы приветствуем всех, кто с нами через интернет. Мы вас приветствуем интернет аудитории.
I'm so glad that you've let me be with you this week as we've been studying how to know the will of God. The will of God is where you want to be. That's where you'll have success, prosperity, protection, provision. It all comes to you when you're in the will of God. It doesn't mean that you won't have problems, but you'll have such a grace on you when you finally step into the place that God has for you. And we've seen this week what you need to do to perceive the will of God for your life. I'm offering you my series, which is called Knowing the Will of God. It's five parts. It is just loaded with teaching and revelation and information. It's really encouraged me. I know it will be a blessing to you or to somebody that you love. And it comes with a study guide. You know, our study guides are amazing. You should go to our website and look up our study guides. There are so many different resources you can use in your study of the Bible right there on our website. Also, right now, we're offering you my book, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. And today is the last day that we're offering it on the program. So order your copy right now. The back of the book says, Are You Ready for a Life Filled with Adventure? If you're seeking to know the will of God for your life, this is the book that will help you find how to get started on your journey of faith. This book is just awesome. Also, I want to say that if you need prayer, again, we're here for you. Call us right now. Oh, we're just waiting for you to call so we can put our faith together with you. But let me pray for you. Father, I thank you so much that you've given us the opportunity to be together this week. Lord, you have a plan for every one of us. You designed that plan before the foundation of the world, and you're waiting for each one of us to step into it. Help our minds to perceive, to hear, and to clearly see what it is that we are to do. Help us to understand the signals, the green light to proceed. And help us to step through that door into a full color spectrum where we experience the journey of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. While well, there is so much exciting waiting for you, if you'll just say yes to the will of God. Thanks for being with me. And remember, Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. I'll see you in the next program. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.